When we see failure on a performance validity test, particularly with children, it can be difficult to decide how to communicate those results, and understandably so. No one likes to be confronted with the fact that they weren't doing their best, even though they may know it. So exactly how we do that is going to be determined by the context of the evaluation, the purpose of the evaluation, and who is the client. Sometimes in forensic settings, the person we're examining is not our client. Sometimes we may have been hired by opposing parties. So when we go to interpret the results and give feedback about those results, we have to carefully consider that context. In some contexts, it might be appropriate to say to the examinee, you may have a nine-year-old sitting there who's getting tired. And you may want to say to them, you know, uh, I can see that maybe you're getting a little tired or distracted and we've been at this for a while. So I'd like to take a little short break and then let's come back. And I really want to be sure that you do the best that you can do. I need you to work as hard as you can work and give your best effort in answering my questions and solving problems and remembering things. So we may use it in, not, in that context to improve the outcome of our assessment. If it happens again in that same context with the same child, we may defer giving any further feedback and wait and give feedback to the parents and say, you know, I couldn't get a complete assessment uh, with your son or your daughter today uh, because they had some trouble giving their best effort and trying their hardest on some of the exam. And then you might talk about how you might remedy that and whether or not you need to do any additional testing on a different day or talk about the purpose of your testing with them and try to remedy that effort. On the other hand, if you have been retained as an expert by the opposing party in a forensic exam, you may not be willing or it may not be appropriate for you to give that feedback at that time. And what uh, may be more appropriate, again, depending on the context, is for you to communicate that to the party who retained you and then let the judicial process decide how that information is communicated appropriately uh, to the parent or to the examinee or whether it, it even is communicated to them and when. So that question has no nice, bright line, clear-cut answer. We always have to consider the context of the evaluation which includes things like its purpose, who is the examinee, who is the client, and what am I attempting to do with this evaluation.